Welcome to Mrs. V's Reading Corner, where you can enjoy books for educational, fun, or even bedtime stories. Please take the time to like this video, comment below with how you enjoyed it, book suggestions, and more. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get all the new books that I post first. The Hindenburg by Patrick O'Brien. The first dirigible in Germany in 1900 was successfully flown. This mammoth airship consisted of several giant gas-filled balloons inside a hard, hollow structure that was moved along by motors and steered by fins. In 1931, the most advanced dirigible yet, Gaff Zeppelin, began flying from Germany across the Atlantic and back, carrying 20 passengers in dreamy luxury. Meanwhile, its designer, Hugo Heckner, had even grander plans in mind. While the Graf Zeppelin was busy with these transatlantic flights, Heckner planned another airship that was soon taking shape at the Zeppelin Company in Germany. A bigger and better ship. The perfect aircraft, the Hindenburg. The new Zeppelin was to be so big that a giant new hangar had to be made to house it. The gas cells in the Hindenburg was filled with hydrogen. Hydrogen can be extremely dangerous because it will explode if it comes into contact with a spark or a flame. All the German Zeppelins ever made had been filled with hydrogen, but the Zeppelin workers were very careful and they had an excellent safety record. In the early days, there had been a few accidents in which crew members were killed, but no paying passenger had ever been hurt or killed in a German Zeppelin accident. The designers of the Hindenburg included all of the latest measures in their new Zeppelin. An American naval officer examined the ship and reported, I consider all possibilities of danger in the new Zeppelin eliminated. In the 1930s, the Nazis came into power in Germany. Eckner did not like their brutal ways. He resisted their control whenever he could, and he made speeches criticizing the Nazi party. Eckner thought that transatlantic travel could help create better understanding between different countries. He said that he wanted to be of service to mankind in the development of air travel. But the Nazis wanted Zeppelins only to glorify Germany and to symbolize Nazi power. The Nazis did not like Eckner, so they made him a non-person. This meant that his name could not be mentioned in newspapers and no one was allowed to print a picture of him. Eckner was forced to put the Nazi symbol, the swastika, on the Hindenburg. His dream airship would have to fly the Atlantic with the hated swastika displayed on the tail fins. The Hindenburg made its first flight to America in May of 1936. The takeoff was so smooth that the passengers did not even know the ship was airborne unless they were looking out of the windows. The ride was perfectly steady and quiet as the ship cruised at 80 miles per hour over the Atlantic Ocean. Only the rich could afford to travel by airship. The tickets were $400, about the price of a small car in those days. The passengers had their own rooms with beds and sinks. 
and there was even a shower on board. The kitchen was well stocked with the finest foods. On Atlantic crossings, the chefs used 440 pounds of meat and poultry, 800 eggs, and 220 pounds of butter. When the airship arrived in America, cruising low over New York City, thousands of people filled their rooftops, window sills, and streets, cheering wildly as the huge Zeppelin floated overhead. Egner later tried to explain the strange appeal of his giant soaring ships. A Zeppelin, he said, was like a fabulous shivery fish floating quietly in the ocean of air. It seemed to be coming from another world and to be returning there like a dream. The Hindenburg made nine more round trip flights to the United States in 1936. The landing spot was in Lakehurst, New Jersey, about an hour south of New York City. During the winter of that year, the Hindenburg made seven trips down to Rio de Janeiro. The first flying season was a huge success and 18 trips to the United States were scheduled for the next year. At the same time, the Zeppelin Company's other ships, the Gruff Zeppelin, was still keeping a schedule of regular flights from Germany to Rio de Janeiro. Because of the success of Hindenburg, Hugo Egner was able to make an agreement with an American company. The Americans would build two big airships and the Zifflin Company in Germany would build two more. There would be four new airships flying the Atlantic. Eckner's dream of regular transatlantic travel was beginning to come true. On May 3rd, 1937, 61 crew members and 36 passengers boarded the Hindenburg for the flight to America. 14-year-old Warner France was thrilled to be a cabin boy on the famous airship. He was the youngest member of the crew. Two of the passengers were even younger, Warner and Wallace Donor ages six and eight. Somewhere over the Atlantic, a steward politely took away Warner's toy truck. It made sparks when it rolled. In an airship filled with explosive hydrogen, sparks could mean disaster. The Hindenburg cruised low over the icebergs of the North Atlantic close to the spot where the Titanic had gone down 25 years before. At four o'clock on the afternoon of May 6, the Hindenburg arrived over the landing field in Lake Hertz, New Jersey. There were thunderstorms in the area, so it cruised south over the beaches of the Atlantic coast to weigh out the storms. Shortly after 7 o'clock, the Hindenburg returned to the landing field and slowed to a stop about 250 feet above the ground. The crew dropped ropes from the ship's nose so the men below could help bring the ship in. Everything was done according to plan. It was a routine landing. There was no warning of what was about to happen. In 32 seconds, the mighty airship Hindenburg was a mass of flaming wreckage on the ground. Amazingly, of the 97 people on board, 67 survived the explosion. One person on the ground was killed and five survivors died later in the hospital. One passenger who was an acrobat was able to hang on outside a window 
of the burning airship until it was low enough that he could drop off onto a sandy ground below. He stood up, brushed himself off, and limped away. One older couple walked down the steps of the slowly falling ship as if it was a normal landing. They escaped, injured but alive. The Donor brothers survived when their mother threw them out of a window into the arms of the rescuers below. Werner Franz, the 14-year-old cabin boy, rode the flaming airship almost all the way to the ground. A large water tank in the ship above his head burst, drenching him with water. He jumped to the ground as the flaming airship was falling around him and dashed out, soaking wet but unharmed. The cause of the Hindenburg explosion is still a mystery. Hugo Eckner felt that there was static electricity in the air because of the thunderstorms in the area and that this electricity might have ignited some hydrogen that was leaking under the back of the airship. Some people believe, however, that a bomb caused the explosion. There was no evidence of a bomb, but the swastikas on the tail of the ship might have made the Hindenburg a target for people who wanted to destroy the symbol of Nazi power. Millions of people around the world watched newsreels of the Hindenburg explosion and heard reports about it on the radio. Zeppelins were now seen as death traps and all interest in building more of them died with the Hindenburg. Agno wrote that it appeared to me the hopeless end of a great dream a kind of end of the world. Over the years, airplanes have been developed to so they're much faster and better than they were before. People now fly in airplanes instead of airships. Even Hugo Egner had to admit that a good thing has been replaced by a better. The mighty Zeppelins no longer cruise through the ocean of air on grand voyages to distant lands. Like the Hindenburg, the era of the great airships is gone forever. The end. Did you know? The Hindenburg made the trip from Germany to America in two and a half days. The only other way to cross the Atlantic was by ship, and the fastest ships needed five days to make the trip. On one return trip from Rio de Janeiro, someone sneaked five monkeys on board of Graf Zeppelin. They soon got loose and were seen swinging through the girders inside the airship. Pets were shipped on the Hindenburg, dogs, birds, fish, and even a deer. The Hindenburg was the biggest thing that ever flew. The Hindenburg was named for a former president of Germany, Paul von Hindenburg. The tower of the top of the Empire State Building was built as a mooring mass it was never used. Airships docked at Mori Mass. A ring on the front of the airship was attached to the top of the mast. This allowed the ship to swing with the wind while mooring. This allowed the ship to swing with the wind while moored. Play stopped at a baseball game between the Brooklyn Dodgers and the Pittsburgh Pirates in Brooklyn when the Hindenburg flew over on its way to a landing. Everyone wanted to watch the airship. <laughs>